Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Popper Gadden Pizza. I'm Gavin Verhe here with Mirko Heisen, Heisen01, you know, his incredible uh, Popper Forum panel member. I'm on the panel as well. We're heading into the finals of this tournament. It has been a fun couple of days of Popper. Yes. Yes, it was an amazing tournament, an incredible tournament. 638 players uh, in this 12-round tournament. And we've seen a ton of new Modern Horizon 3 cards shown up. We've seen the Sadistic Glee combo deck, yeah. which is really incredible. We've seen a lot of Sneaky Snacker. We've seen a Ponza deck. We've seen Thrabin Charm. We've seen so many new cards, but it all comes down to this. The final match, two decks that are kind of newer on the rise in Popper, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a lot of uh, new cards from Modern Horizon 3, and uh, the two decks are Rakdos, Madness, and Ponza. Yeah, now, here's the thing about this matchup. So the Ponza deck, the reason why it's so popular at this tournament is it really preys on a lot of the decks yeah. that uh, that have been played a lot recently people were expecting, right? It's really good against stuff like uh, Cawgate. It's really good against a lot of the mid-range decks. It's been pretty good against Affinity, all these kinds of strategies. The weakness, these aggro decks. Yes, yes, that's for sure. That's for sure. So uh, in the, in this moment, also also combo decks. Yes, yes. Also combo decks. But in this moment, uh, uh, Ponza is uh, very well positioned. If we, see, we can see the meta breakdown right of, here. we can see the meta breakdown. The Ponza has. Um, so this is the TPP. Okay, this is. We can see how um, Ponza has a good matchup uh, versus uh, Affinity, that is the most played deck. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will see against Madness because it's the third deck uh, most played. So we will see if uh, the matchup is good or not. But uh, today, the player, Giorgio Combo, Giorgio Venditti, is really on fire. Yeah, so so that's kind of the story for me here, right? In yeah. this matchup, Madness is super favored, in my opinion. It's a quick, aggressive deck. It deals a lot of damage fast. It is exactly what the Ponza deck does not want to see. However, this Ponza player has been running hotter than the sun. Yeah, he has he has been thermocarsting your land on turn two every single game. Uh, he is he is on fire. He is hitting all of his his drops, and we might see an incredible game of Magic that's about to unfold. It might be really fast in terms of the Madness deck taking it down, or the Ponza deck might wrangle it right back in their favor. I mean, I, it's who knows. I mean, if that if the game goes on long at all, Writhing Chrysalis, a yes. huge new card out of Modern Horizons three. It wasn't really on a lot of people's radars, I think, coming into this event, and it's been huge. Yes, the, this creature completely changed the meta game in the last month, but uh, no one expected that. Uh, I wasn't expecting this uh, this change in uh, this direction in the meta game, but still, here we are. Yeah, I mean, if you've played Modern Horizon Three Draft, you've probably lost a Rising Chrysalis. You have an idea of what's going on, but coming down, making those two spawns before it even enters the battlefield, so you can't bolt it right away, and then becoming a four-five reach when flying is a huge part of the of the format. A lot of people are trying to chunk through damage with flyers, and even in this Madness deck, they've got a bunch of flyers with um, the two-two haste imp that flies, as well as another brand new card, Sneaky Snacker. Do you want to talk about how big that card yeah. has been this weekend? Yes, this card uh, uh, entered in uh, the Madness, in the Rakdos Madness deck, uh, and also in Affinity. In those two decks, uh, is able to generate a lot of uh, advantage, and there are uh, a few, uh, two, few divination at instant speed that can uh, uh, create a situation in which uh, in end phase the board is empty, and the, uh, when you untap, you have two or three flyers that are ready to attack, deal some damage, and in a barn deck, uh, in a slow, slow barn deck like uh, Rakdos uh, Madness uh, can be a very good threat. Yeah, I was playing against that deck earlier, actually, and turn one Faithless Looting, discard two Sneaky Snackers, Yeah, I've never felt further behind. That was wild. It was turn one Faithless Looting, discard two Snackers, turn two Faithless Looting, uh, and then Madness and Imp, and bring both Snackers back. Six points of power on turn two? That is an aggressive strategy. That is incredibly powerful. Yes, 
Yes, yes, and now we'll see, we will see if in the final uh, the above the player uh, will be able to do the, the nut start uh, to see the the real power of the two decks. Yeah, absolutely. Now I do think a big thing here, and we're gonna find out in a moment when we go to the game what's happening is who wins the dice roll. Being yeah. on the play is gonna be a big factor in this matchup. Yes, yes, I, I do think that the top eight. Uh, if we see the Oh, yeah, it, it'll be seated because it's the top eight, right? Yes, but the first uh, is the Venditti is the seventh, and uh, Le, I think it's Petsa, uh, the, the fourth. So, so Rakdos is going to be on the play. Yes. That's huge. So, because, yes. right, so in the top eight, it's done based on your seating. Fourth place going in was Rakdos, seventh place was Ponza. So, yes. Rakdos is going to be going first here, which is huge, right? If you get off to one of those blazing starts on the play, it's going to be big, and a huge move out of the Ponza deck is a card that people have been playing for a very long time in Magic. It fell out for a long time, and it's back, but has been huge here this weekend, Thermocarst. Yes. Yes, Thermocarst was... Uh, he has a lot of damage in the metagame currently because uh, now we have uh, uh, not one single player, or at least very few of uh, Familiar and the Tron deck, so Flickertron, Altartron, were destroyed. Absolutely. Like if you're one of those land-based decks, this Ponza deck, true to its name, playing four Thermocarst, four Mulvuni Acid Moss, just totally strips you of your resources. Yes. And on the play, when you play an Arbor Elf or Utopia Sprawl, you just turn two Thermocars to them, and they are so far behind, especially if you have an Acid Moss or something in your hand. I mean, it is wild. And so being on the play is really huge for that deck. A yes. little bit less meaningful, perhaps, when you're playing as an aggro deck that can make a board presence, but it's a pretty pretty big deal. We have also to think that the the, the, the best start for Venditti is Land, Utopia, and then Thermocast on turn two. But if you are on the, on the draw... It's not that effective. Yeah, absolutely, right? Especially against an aggressive deck. If yeah. they're a slower th turn two Thermocarst, blowing up your land on turn two, still pretty good. But if, you know, they're able to get a two drop down or even start, you know, discarding some sneaky snackers by that point, yes. you can already be falling behind. So it, it's going to be a pretty epic match. But, you know, we've seen a lot of other cool decks here in the top eight, just kind of recapping what we've seen. In addition, there's been seven different decks in the top eight here. Yes. Now, the two of them were Rakdos Madness, so the two had to play actually in the quarterfinals against each other, so only one Rakdos Madness emerged victorious. But let's talk about some of the other decks we've seen here in the top eight while these folks are getting ready for their final matchup. Let's start with Wall Combo. How do you feel about that deck in this format? I think that is a good call against Ponza because uh, Ponza doesn't play a lot of interactions, so uh, you, you can simply build your, uh, um, your board and uh, yeah, cast your big spells uh, uh, easily without any fear of uh, a counter, of a removal or something like that. So in this tournament, the most played version uh, where, uh, was uh, uh, the... Um, the cascade version, not the combo version, not the full combo version, but uh, uh, most uh, most of the player uh, were played the combo on sideboard. And normally, I would say that the walls deck is favored against the Ponza deck. It's a good matchup for walls. But yep. speaking to how you know hot uh, Giorgio has been running, he took it down in the quarterfinals. Yeah, but Giorgio. I, I, I have to say again, Giorgio is on fire. Yes. <laughs> Giorgio was able to destroy two uh, Worlds combo in a row in the last two matches. Okay. It is amazing. Yes, incredible. Let's talk about some of the other uh, decks here in the top eight. There's a brand new combo deck that's showing up in this tournament yes. using the card Sadistic Glee. Tell me about this combo deck. This combo deck is... Uh, it, it, it's uh, It's a... Uh, it's completely new. It's completely fresh in the meta. And in the in the past, uh, I think, two weeks, three weeks, because Modern Horizon Wales uh, released it two, three weeks ago, three weeks ago. So no one, uh, uh, no one was able to do a lot of... Uh, a lot of results on Magical Line. So uh, we, we, we had a lot of different list kind of list uh, the the golgari one uh, the the jand one so this is maybe the best uh, version the one that made top eight yeah i think so I mean, and it's a good place to start right i think that starting from now we will have 
plenty of uh, this uh, this list, uh, th- this combo, this glee combo decks uh, on magical line also. Yeah, it really feels like a Splinter Twin situation. Yes. Well, here we are. It sounds like the players are about ready, so we're going to go down to the game for the finals here of Popper Geddon Pisa, Rakdos Madness versus Ponza, two of the big decks of this tournament, and we're going to um, to start it off here. And once again, Rakdos Madness was higher in the Swiss, so they're going to be on the play. Looks like they're just uh, finishing resolving mulligans, and uh, then we're ready to get started. It has to be a lot of pressure for both these players. I, I, I like the, the glasses on. <laughs> just to say, okay, I have to take one moment <laughs> to, <laughs> to find the energy to win this game and to be the Pauper Geddon champion of this uh, spring edition 2024. For sure. Well, here we go. After the race is all ready for both players. Turn one, there's one of those new deserts from Outlaws of Thunder Junction, pinging their opponent for one. Every point of damage counts. But Vendetti, hot as usual. Turn one, Armor Elf. Yes. Oh, and bold on the Elf. That'll slow it down. No turn two Thermocars for you. But against a deck like Barn, you have to expect this kind of uh, interactions. So this is the, this is the new cantrip, the new green cantrip. Yeah, this is another huge new card out of Modern Horizons 3. You look at your top four cards, and you get to take a permit from them into your hand, and you yeah. also make a spawn, which really curves you in nicely. Notably, yeah. passing on the Writhing Chrysalis there and taking the Arbor Elf instead. So it might be says something about what's in Venditti's hand here. Maybe there's no Red Source or something yeah. like that, because otherwise you could curve into the Chrysalis next turn. Yeah, so from now, this is a... Very good, uh, a very good token for uh, the Eldrazi spawn. And uh, the, the only problem with uh, Arbor Elf is that another bolt is able to slow down uh, you again. So we're going to see something cool here. Plotting, another yeah. brand new card out of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Highway Robbery. Yeah, this is a huge card. It lets you uh, draw two cards, sort of like a... Uh, you know, a classic discard a card, draw to effect. You can also sacrifice a land. But um, by plotting it, it lets you set it for a future turn where you want to draw a bunch of cards and perhaps bring back your sneaky snackers. So yep. it doesn't, you don't really need to do it this turn, so why not do it later on? Yeah, uh, also in this moment, uh, if the player has no other mana to play other spells, uh, you are able to simply uh, plot the card and then start uh, the turn after without spend any mana just to... Generate the advantage easily. Now, uh, he plays another tap desert, dealing a point of damage. I will say you want to get pressure on this Ponza deck early. So the fact there are no creatures in play yet for Rakdos Madness is a little concerning. But yeah. perhaps next turn we'll see like a hasty imp or something along those lines. Now, here we go. Wild growth on, um, on that forest, followed up by Arbor Elf. So ready to make a ton of mana. Notably, no uh, red source hanging out, though. Yeah. I think that uh, here... A uh, Galvanic Blast or a Bolt must kill that elf, because otherwise, the, in the uh, in the next turn, uh, Venditti will be able to cast an Altisaur yes. or stuff like that. Uh, threats, uh, big threats uh, uh, that can generate uh, advantage in sort in a sort of way. So, are we going to see this come off of plot here? discarding a card, there's a sneaky snacker in the yes. graveyard, and because that happens first, and then you draw two cards, boom, the snacker is right back on the battlefield. One of the biggest cards all weekend, sneaky snacker. Just gotta this, love snacking. This is free. This is completely free. Oh, and then Faithless Looting right here. Gonna draw two, discard two. Getting just the cards you need. It's amazing how much this deck can do, this Red Black Madness deck can do, yeah. while still keeping a ton of cards in its hand. Wow. Oh, look at this. Yeah, discard the imp, wow. put it into play. Fiery Temper down the elf. So look like that, just out of nowhere, generate a ton of advantage, and yeah. still has a grip full of cards. Yeah, right. he didn't discard the three cards. He played three cards right. and draw three cards. Yeah, uh, Faithless Looting's pretty good when it just reads red, discard two cards, and play your cards for cheaper, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's Voldar and Epicure coming in, dealing a point of damage and making a blood. Blood, really great for smoothing out those draws and letting you madness a little bit extra, too. Absolutely, and just to put uh, also more pressure. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, it was a couple slow first turns there, but that just shows how quickly this deck can turn it around. All right, we're going to see another wow. wild growth on that forest. So six mana, but still not red mana. So no Bogging red. Party is not... Uh, He's not uh, going to add to the party. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Maybe the Altasaur next turn we might yeah. see come down. Um, but the point is uh, there are... Oh, wow. Oh, all right, wow. so we're going to take the initiative. 
which means yeah. we'll get a mountain. So the first, you know, there's a lot of things in that initiative dungeon. The first rung you always get, though, is going to get a basic land from your deck, which is exactly yeah. what Vendetti's going to do here. Go get that mountain. So he'll unlock red on the subsequent turn. However, Pezza, he's going to be able to come in and take that initiative away because certainly he's going to connect. Yeah. So not only will he get a land, but the subsequent chapters of that are very strong, especially the ability to deal five damage. Yes, but in this case, is uh, it is very good for Rakdos Madres that is going to steal the initiative, uh, uh, find another land, uh, and uh, it's not easy. It's not an easy situation because uh, Venditti maybe uh, was forced to try to find the red source, uh, but uh, it's not a good spot. No, definitely not. I mean, this is exactly the kind of thing you're worried about. Not only are you behind the curve a little bit, but you didn't have access to your red mana and were forced to play the Avenging Hunter. And now you're going to be able to, you know, take the initiative yeah. back. And long term, if you hold it, that is really bad news for you. All right, yeah. now here's a here's an old drain three. Once again, awesome. Blood, discard this, madness it, deal three to you, gain three, and then draw a card off the blood. Blood just turning into a one mana clue. He is continuing to uh, cycling card uh, and uh, do the effect of the card. So it's very, it, 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 it's huge. It's huge. This deck has looked so good to me all weekend. Just yeah. the amount of value it gets out of all of its cards. A really cool, aggressive deck. All right, here we're going to see crashing in for four points of damage, taking the initiative away, going to get a land of his own. And notably, I mean, that he doesn't really need the extra land necessarily, but just putting an extra card into his hand is yeah. huge so he can discard it. He can even play the land and flashback Faithless Looting if he just wants to, although I predict he'll want to hold that um, for a little bit. We'll, we'll see here. So from now, the the, the, the point is Veniti is uh, at the, only at eight, uh, eight um, life, at six life, so it's uh, under the rage of uh, Double Bolt. Another huge card here. So that drains their opponent for two and makes not one, but two blood tokens. It's, it's like a huge divination. Yeah. The, 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 cheaper and huge divination because <laughs> also you are able to gain uh, some time because you gain uh, uh, you gain true life, deal true damage, uh, and in the future, draw two cards uh, and play cast <laughs> two cards. So... Yeah, exactly. And there's Vodon Epicure coming down. So what? Drop down to five. Here's the Altasaur, though. Into Writhing Chrysalis. I mean, if you're going to hit something, that is a good one to hit. The Altasaur has reached. The Chrysalis has reached. So those Flyers are not safe. And if he wants to, we can even talk about attacking with that 4-5, uh, taking the initiative back, going to the second stage, and have two blockers for the Flyers there. Yes. And that's exactly what we're going to see right here. It's the kind of situation in which Ponza try to stabilize the board uh, and then uh, try to over over uh, go over the the the, the value uh, or respect the uh, the opponent uh, but uh, the, the problem is in, in this matchup the opponent is able to deal uh, a lot of damage without uh, uh, passing through the com uh, to the combat so yeah so i mean it's he, not easy he, so he's got great protection here the issue is of course that life total. He's yeah. still at five life. Uh, the Rakdos Magic deck, Magic deck runs Galvanic Blast. It's yeah. got lots of ways to deal points of damage. So while you, even if you stabilize the board, uh, the amount of burn out of hand is huge, especially when you've got those three blood tokens and Faithless Looting to let you just filter through cards looking for the last few points of damage. So Vendetti's going to have to turn the corner really quickly here. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they've got three Eldrazi spawn. we got that Altasaur. we got that 2-3 Chrysalis and... Um, you know, those are going to hold down the fort pretty well. Look, look at the table. There's, two, you know, a bunch of different Modern Horizons 3 cards hanging out here, both the Chrysalis yes. and the Snacker, two of yeah. the biggest cards in this whole tournament. Looks like uh, they're having a little bit of a, of a discussion hey, I mean, right now. I think they're going to the, to the second stage of the initiative, which is a two plus one plus one counters. Yes. He's choosing where he wants to put it. He's going down the left side here. I mean, the the, the, the real problem is that uh, the, the opponent, so the, the Rakdos Madness player, has plenty of cards in hand uh, just because he... Didn't discard it any because he played all the cards that he draws. So. Right, so he puts the two counters on the Altasaur. Makes sense it has Trample. And now we're going to see, yep. can he find the burn spells to finish him off? Because if so, this Ponza deck could get wow. somewhere within a couple turns. Okay, there's this a third, the third flyer. flyer. Third flyer. We're going to just see Crunch in, get you to three. Crunch in, push you to three. Block the, the two ones that won't come back from the graveyard. Those are going to die. Dealing two to you, take the initiative away, and then a Galvanic, Galvanic blast, blast to finish the job. There it is. Just had to get in one more point of damage, and that will pack up the first game. A nice job trying to come back with Vendetti, but not quite good enough. Yes, yes, yes. 
So the, the game one, I think that uh, is the most difficult for Ponza and post uh, post board. There are a lot of uh, uh, cards that uh, can deal with the, this strategy. Yeah, so let's go to the sideboard, and let's just talk about what these players have in their sideboard. So let's start with Rakdos Madness. We've got the sideboard here. It looks like three Nihel Spellbomb, four Smash to Smithereens, two Gorilla Shamans. Uh, I, I can't make those out. Mirka, what are the last cards here? I think... Is that the 1BB minus 2 minus 2 spell? I, I can't quite make it out. Sorry, we're looking at, at the at the list here, and... Uh, it's not totally clear what the, these last couple cards are. We're, we're zooming and enhancing. I mean, is, is the enchant that uh, deal with, um, if you enchant a, a land... Oh, Contaminated and... Ground? Yeah. Holy smokes. If, if, you know, for all out there who don't know what Contaminated Ground does, it's one and a black to enchant a land, and whenever Enchanted Land becomes tapped, they take three damage. So uh, it really, it's sort of like a, a semi-land destruction true, spell. True damage, Two damage? Two damage? I, if I remember well. And then yeah. the last card, I, now that it's closer, I can see is Trespasser's Curse which is the one in a black for an enchantment, deals one to them, and I think it drains them for one every turn. So if you're the pawn, if you're the uh, red, uh, black madness deck, what are you bringing in here? Uh, against Ponza. Against that, Ponza, maybe this, the, the, the enchantment on the, on the land. Yeah, if you put it on the land, they're going to untap with the Arbor Elf, right? They yeah. really can't afford to do that a bunch of times. Other than that, though, there's not a lot here. It's possible he thought his matchup against Ponza was just so favored. He's like, I'm good. Bring in the three contaminated grounds at most, and uh, and I'll be happy. Let's switch over to look at this red green deck, who's going to need a lot more help against the red black madness deck. Here we've got two gorilla shamans. Seen a lot of those in sideboards this weekend. Two breath weapon, four lightning bolt, which is a really interesting sideboard card. Yeah. Helps you to just kill off their creatures. Four de glamours, and then three Nylia's disciple, which is four mana, two green green. Importantly, for a three three, and when it comes into play, you gain life equal to your devotion to green. So it'll at least gain you two life unless it's killed in response, and maybe even a little bit more based on those wild growth and utopia sprawls. What do you bring in here? I mean, in, in, in this moment, for sure that Nylia's, uh, but uh, uh, we have to think uh, also. Also, bad weapon, and we have to think: uh, Do we want the, the Glamour and Gorilla Shaman? I think Gorilla Shaman is a really good card because you can destroy every um, every blood token and stuff like that. Uh, also, plenty of lands uh, from Mirrodin. Uh, the, the problem is: Do you want the Glamour? Maybe yes over the other eight bonsai effect. I mean, on the play, I think I like the Glamour, right? That you yep. play a tapped land and you can just get rid of it. Although it is, they might not have it in their opening hand. One thing I'll say that you have to be careful about, though, is there's a ton of cards you want to sideboard in here. Like, you could sideboard in almost all of those cards in the sideboard to the point of which, what are you taking out, right? Are you going to destabilize your deck? You definitely cut cards like Avenging Hunter to keeping the initiative yep. is going to be really hard here. But what other cards are you taking out? So, um, I, you know, I haven't seen how he sideboards against Rakdos Madness. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of almost transformational sideboard yeah. where you take out a whole game plan and put a new one in. We're going to find out right now. By the way, we just peaked over 1,200 viewers here on Twitch. Thanks to all of you out there for watching. Yeah. This has been an incredible weekend. And to cap it off with this viewership, amazing. So thank you all. Thank Pop you all. Thank Pop you all. Popper again, by the way, an incredible event. You all got to get out here and check it out. It is so much fun. I was in Pisa last year. I'm back this year. Hope to come out again next year. It is a blast. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Okay. Looks like... Uh, Looks like Rakdos Madness is keeping, and I think Ponza might be going for a mulligan. Looks like uh, yeah, maybe. because uh, Veniti is uh, uh, he wants always to start with the nuts. Yes. So, well, <laughs> yeah. How are you going to do that if you don't uh, if you don't mulligan for it, right? And uh, you know, on the play, you really want to find that strong opening hand. All right. So here we are. Turn one, Arbor Elf. Yeah. Big question. Is there a burn spell or is there a tapped artifact land? Those are both two things because the tapped artifact land cannot be thermocarsted and the burn spell, of course, keeps you off of turn two thermocarst, which I just feel like Vendetti has every time. It's just, okay, so here we go. A tapped land and it is not an artifact land. So if he has, okay, there is no... Malevolent Rambling and there is Gorilla. Gorilla and Nilea's Disciple. Right, so there's some big cards. He's taking the forest, it looks like. You know, he pointed out it, maybe I not. I think that he is thinking. Maybe he's thinking he's here. He's thinking still. All right, so look, he revealed Gorilla Shaman, Nylia's Disciple, Utopia Sprawl, and Forest. So no bold bird in this case. That is uh, a rule. Uh, when I started to play Magic, uh, it was uh, the most important rule. 
Yes, it still is. In fact, in the Magic Companion app, one of the little loading screens says bolting the bird or whatever, yeah. you know? So it's truly an iconic bit. Okay, he's taking the Utopia Sprawl. Very good with that Arbor Elf. You can untap the forest to make additional mana. Uh, and he just passes the turn. Wow. So he's really banking on no burn spell. If, if that wow. Arbor Elf gets burned here, I mean, the game might be over. I mean, yeah. uh, see, he thought about the forest, opted not to take it, decided to take the risk. If he doesn't have the burn spell, I can Utopia Sprawl this forest, untap and get two mana, and then I really am going to get ahead. But stuck on one land? Yeah. Woo, it is but, a tough spot. You know, I risk, I reward. So we, he decided to take the risk, and we will see if the rewards will be high enough. For sure. I mean, when you're in a position like this, you absolutely, if you're falling behind, if you're in a tough matchup, sometimes you have to just hope that, you yeah. know, you the things go your way to be able to win the game. Because, well, if you take the forest down there and the rest of your hand is bad, maybe you just got to go for the Utopia Sprawl and, and hope it works out. So we're seeing uh, Rakdos Madness now in the tank, has not even played a second land. And the land drops with this deck can be really tricky, right? Because if you have Faithless Looting in your hand, you don't know, do you want to play your land first? Or if there's other stuff you want to do. Um, if he has the burn spell, I got to imagine he just fires it off on that, oh, that Arbor Elf, though. I mean, your opponent misses their land drop. They have Arbor Elf and play Utopia Sprawl in their hand. So if, if Peza has a burn spell, it is going to come down right here. I, I feel pretty good about that. Um, but, you know, he's thinking about that land. Unless he doesn't have a second land either, which would be very, yeah. very wild game. Uh, also, sure the, the, the Utopia is another land. It, it is, but next turn you have to tap the forest to enchant itself. Yeah. Okay, here's a tap land, dealing one damage. Followed up by, okay, not a burn spell. It's Vildar and Epic here. So that Arbor Elf is going to see the light of day. This is yes. it. Vendetti crossing his fingers, taking his chances, hoping that Arbor Elf sticks, which it does. And he'll get to Utopia Sprawl up that forest. Now, if he draws a land here, things could be going around. Because that's four mana, yeah, five mana with mana. Eldrazi spawn. All right, well, here we go. Utopia Sprawl getting uh, forest getting I tapped. I don't think he... There's the Sprawl. Yes. Yep. Now we can untap with Arbor Elf for two mana. And no, he's, uh, he has three mana available Yes. currently. But for three mana, I don't think that in the list there is something relevant. Maybe another uh, uh, another Malevolent Rumbling. Yep, yep, could be, could be. I mean, you could uh, just untap the Force and cast yeah. the, the Malevolent Rumbling. So one thing I'd be thinking about if I was in Pez's shoes right now is, okay, my opponent kept a kind of risky hand. Granted, they were on six cards. What made them keep this hand? Because keeping a one land hand with an elf is very risky against this burn deck, especially yep. on the play. So what else was in their hand that made them so excited to keep this? And it could be there are some strong sideboard cards yeah, hanging mean, out in there. Yeah, but another point is that this is a move to six. Yes. So Didn't want to go to five. It's pretty risky in Ponza. Yeah. All right, so three, one, two, three. Here we go. Thermocast, you. Three mana and plus a Thermocast. There it is. So he did have the Thermocast on time. He, he kept a hand that would have been able to Thermocast turn two had he drawn a land. So now Peza, Peza down a land and uh, presumably still can't deal with that elf unless he plucked a card from the top of his library that will do the trick. So the chat is asking if the Utopia Sprawl is on red or green. My guess is it would be on, on red, but yeah, uh, I don't have confirmation of that right now for you. It doesn't have to be on green because Arbor Elf could untap it. All right, two mana. Here we go. A contaminated grand and out of the sideboard. Here we go. Yes. A card. <laughs> truly, this is a trash draft common. I, I can I can see the the pain of uh, uh, the, the pain of uh, Giorgio. Oh, and wild. Right, check this out. Contaminated ground turns it into a swamp, which wow. means Utopia Sprawl falls off. Wow, this is huge. That, I did not think about that. That is gigantic. What a, what a sideboard move. This is It makes huge. the Utopia Sprawl fall off. That is incredible. And that, I mean, that drops him half his mana production. This is huge. Wow. And check, yeah, here we go. Now it's all going to be probably but child's play. Discard the imp, draw two cards, refuel the hand, have a bunch of attackers, still no second land for Vendetti. So, I mean, Pizza had uh, a really cool uh, prediction on the meta because this is a card that no one was thinking about uh, and is incredible against Ponza. If you expect a meta full of Ponza, it's... Really, it's huge. It's amazing. That Wow, what a card. Just what a ma card. makes it not a forest. You can't have with Arbor Elf. You can't enchant it with Utopia Sprawl. A totally forgettable card. I mean, I've seen this card play in Popper a couple times, but not, not substantially. 
What a sideboard card for this Ponta deck. What an amazing a really deck nice builder. Find. What an amazing deck builder. The card we literally had to zoom in on in, yep. the, in the sideboard. Be like, what is that? Well, there it is. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to call it before it's over, but uh, it would be pretty hard pressed for the Ponza Ponza deck to get back in this. I think we're gonna see Rakdos Madness close it. Um, you know, it might be a couple turns of play left here, but we're gonna, you know gonna have this imp crack in for two. The um, the one one Voldar and Epicure cracking for additional point of damage. They'll drop Vendetti down to three life. There's a, a drain for two as well that gives uh, you a couple more blood tokens. Also yeah. been, a, been a big card for the deck this weekend. Wow! Wow! wow over thirteen hundred viewers. Thanks to all of you. This is amazing. Is this the highest popper again viewage of all time? Oh, I think so. That's amazing. Well, thank you all for make coming out there and watching this final match and all the top eight. It's been incredible. I encourage you to go back and. Watch the uh, other games of the top eight. They were they were quite wonderful as well. All right, we're going to see a little, oh, discarding Sneaky Snacker to the blood. Then we're going to see another blood activation to bring the Snacker back. Yeah, that, I, It's a real snack attack. Yeah, I mean, in, in this case, it, this Sneaky Snacker is uh, an, an overkill. It's a, it's a little insult to injury, perhaps. Yeah. Just a, a speed bump, perhaps, on the way yes. to victory. <laughs> All right, well... There's Rakdos Carnarium. Just, just to really add insult to injury, I'll play my Bounce Land. You know, I'm not even scared about Viura Thermocarst yes. anymore. And that's going to be it. Peza takes a Rakdos Madness, taking down the tournament. Congratulations. This deck has looked great. It played Sneaky Snacker, one of the biggest cards of the weekend. And I think we're going to get him here in the booth in a second to actually talk to us yes. about his deck. Yes. During all the during all the tournament of the Three days tournament for uh, the, uh, the top power player and the Pope Gannon. We spoke about many times uh, the new Chrysalid, but uh, at the end, the Sneaky Snacker was the card that won the Pope Gannon. Yeah, I mean, for me, there, there's like three really big cards this weekend. It's yeah. the Chrysalis, the Glee combo deck, the Brood Scale. So yeah, uh, Glee not a new sure. card, Brood Scale is. And then this card, the Sneaky Snacker. Now, there's many others that have shown up in decks, but really... Those are the three. And to see two of them there fighting off against each other and then Sneaky Snacker coming out on the table at the end, what a moment there. And what a cool deck. What a great tournament. Seven different decks in the top eight. Rakdos Madness kind of, you know, not, doesn't have that many people talking about it. Comes in, takes the event down. Ponza in the finals. Wow. Just so much fun. So yes. much fun today. Yes, yes. It was an amazing tournament. Uh, really an amazing tournament. Uh, it was also an experience for for me and for other players to do the coverage of this, uh, this event. I hope that you all enjoy also the coverage, the tournament, uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, thank you all for watching. Like, like I said, don't go anywhere because we're going to get the winner in here for a second for a little post-game interview. Before we do, um, we've got another big event coming to you uh, yeah. early next year. Do you want to talk about that for us, Mirka? So the next big tournament organized by, by Booz, uh, it will be the Damnation in the first week of January. So uh, I hope that uh, the, this tournament will be huge like this, uh, and uh, there will uh, always there will also uh, be a power side event uh, on the two days. Uh, it will be a similar tournament like like this. Uh, so the community is on, on top of every event uh, of uh, this uh, incredible person like uh, John Luca Bose. Uh, so yeah. yeah. I think that's going to be uh, January 3rd, 4th, and 5th, and it'll be Legacy and Modern are the main formats for that event. So if you like those formats, definitely come and check it out. And now we're going to hear from the winner. He's going to come in here in just a second. And something yep. I, I just realized that's, that's kind of incredible is the Ponza deck got outland destructed, right? The yep. irony of Ponza losing <laughs> because it doesn't have enough lands is hilarious. Well, here we Hello. go. C come on back. Come talk on. to us. Talk to us. Come on. Come on in. Uh, yeah, we'll get a chair for you right here. Yes, here, here is our champion. Welcome to, to the booth. Now, just so you know, make sure to talk into the microphones. They're, they're directional. Oh, perfect. Here you go. How are you feeling right now? I'm living a dream. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm awake or uh, I'm still sleeping, but uh, I never uh, would have, I would have never imagined to, to be here. Okay, so well, I, I got a lot of things <laughs> I want to ask you about. First, though... Contaminated ground? You where, had, where did that come from? <laughs> you had a real amazing read of uh, the meta. Uh, that wasn't my idea. Uh, big shout out to my friend, Luca. Uh, he suggested it to me. I, I didn't have a, even have it. 
I bought it uh, game one, uh, day one, and uh, luckily I found it uh, right five minutes before starting the tournament. So. Wow, five before, minutes yeah. before the starting of the yeah, tournament. Yeah, right, you're just yeah. walking around wow, trying yeah, to find yeah. anyone got contaminated grounds. Anyone got contaminated grounds? Anybody? Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. And you managed to find them. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, so let, let's go back for a second. Tell me about why you chose this deck for the tournament. What led you to choosing Rakdos Madness? Uh, well, um, I'm not uh, a fan of a uh, combo of control uh, decks. Um, uh, I like to go straight to the point. Uh, burn the point down is the easiest thing to do for me, and uh, it turned out to be the, the best choice. So, so this is your pet deck? I picked it up uh, like one month ago. I played it in the wow. top eight of the league I play in Milan. And uh, I like it. Madness is a, a nice mechanic. I, I, I've always liked it. And uh, yeah, it works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah if, you're, if you're not familiar with kind of the popper scene in Italy, every region has its own popper series yeah. and they all come together to play in the popper geddens. Yeah. So you played that in the Milan, in like a, one of the Milan local events, it yeah. sounds like. Yeah. yeah. That That's incredible. Uh, so, how do you feel, feel about your matchups? Like, what are the things you're most scared to face? If someone's trying to beat you, what should they play to, to fight you? I, I said it to everybody. I really hate uh, Cogate. <laughs> 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 it uh, always tricks me with the uh, life gain, the the Lancer, uh, the Basilisk Gate. I it trips me, trips me off. Okay, so the contaminated ground came in handy uh -huh. like that. Yeah, turns off the Basilisk Gate. Yeah. Another very smart move. I, my only drew was uh, draw. I was against uh, Cogate. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah, I mean, and Cogate yep. had a pretty a bad result this tournament. Only one copy made day two. Okay. But now maybe with Rakdos Madness on top, mm. we'll we'll see more. Yeah. What about yeah, the sure. good matchups? What are you hoping to play against? Um, I, I don't know. Um, uh, like Pongs, I, I wasn't a, I, I never thought it was a problem because, uh, okay, yes, okay. I, I can go big guys, but whatever. I have the fairies, the new Sneaky Snuggers. They're perfect to... Chump lock it. Yeah. They come back uh, infinitely. So, Punta was okay, the big monster of the tournament, but who cares? I just burned it down. So, so can, can you give us a, a feedback uh, for uh, the Sneaky Snacker inside the deck? Uh, how strong is that card? Embarrassingly. Embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Fit, four Fatalist losing, four uh, Sneaky Snackers. How many times did you start with uh, land, uh, Fatalist looting, discarding, choose Sneaky Snacker? Hmm. <laughs> A quite, a, quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gavin, but <laughs> you were a witness of it. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We, we played a game yeah. where I got turn one uh, Seeky Snacker, yeah. double Seeky Snacker. That was that was tough. That was a really tough one. <laughs> it was a great match, though. It was yeah. a great match. Yeah. Um, so everyone out there is going to see your deck list. They're going to probably go and copy it and start playing it. After playing the event, what would you change? Is there anything in your deck that you're like, mm, I would tweak this or this card in the sideboard wasn't as good as I thought it would be? Is there anything that everyone out there is going to go play your deck? You'd be like, actually, change this bit? Uh, well, I, uh, before starting the tournament, I thought uh, Trespasser Curse uh, was uh, very good uh, versus uh, Mono Red, Kuldota, obviously, but I thought it was good uh, also against uh, combo decks, like uh, Goblin Combo or the new Sadistic Lee Combo. Mm -hmm. But uh, after a, a deep analysis of it, um, uh, my, some some of my friends, uh, more skilled friends, skilled than me, explained it that uh, it doesn't work like you think because they can just hold priority and uh, the course never tr actually triggers. So that was overrated by my part, but okay, that that w w would be the only thing that I change. Yeah. So replace those three curses. Any cards you, you wish you had in your sideboard? Mm, I don't know. I I'm a really big fan of uh, Duras. Mm. Okay. Duras always work against. Against combos, against counterspells. I hate being counterspelled, so <laughs> Duress is my card. Well, yeah. Especially if Cogate shows up to help counter Red Black yeah, Madness, exactly. Duress is yeah. a nice card to have against yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. So here we are, and here we have your trophy. Yes, let's bring this in. Check this out. Boom! I'd like to present to you the Poppergen Pisa champion right oh. here. Almost 650 players after two days of competition all comes down to this man sitting right next to us. So a huge congratulations playing Red Black Madness. You absolutely crushed it. Sneaky Snacker, a great card for you in the tournament. Any final words if the, or kind of things you want to go ahead and share to the audience before we you know, wrap up? Uh, keep playing Pauper with your friends. Uh, don't uh, be uh, afraid of... Uh, 
being too competitive. Just play, play the game, have fun, and uh, keep your friends together and uh, play together. That, that's Enjoy the, the that, community. That's proper community. Yeah, that's, that's all right. at the gathering. Yeah. Incredible. Well, well, well. Thank. You. Oh, it looks like we have one there more thing. There are other yeah. gifts. Oh, please go ahead. Come more tip tokens. Yes, this is a work uh, of uh, our friends uh, Mezzocello. Uh, only for the winner. Only for the winner. Serialized. So. Thank you. Thank it, you, Mezzocello. Thank it, you. It's <laughs> like uh, the, it's like the one ring. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, call, call it Post Malone, you know, see what we, yeah. see what we <laughs> yes, can do. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, nice. well. Also, the playmat. Oh, the, of course, the championship playmat here. <laughs> Got to show this off. The unique. Uh, so much cool stuff here at Poppergeddon. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Beautiful. Incredible. So many cool things. It was a pleasure to have you here. It was a pleasure to watch you play, watch you playing this kind of game. So. Continue to play, keep playing, uh, and uh, keep winning. Yes. Thank you. Sounds Thank you. good. Yeah. Th thank you so much. <laughs> Congratulations. And now Thank we'll you let you mean. get out of here and go talk to your friends. I'm <laughs> yeah. sure you want to talk to some beer of your or teammates. Two, yeah, maybe. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and then, uh, all right. Well, th thanks so much. Why don't you head out of here, and then we'll close down the show really fast. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> what an incredible finals there. Rakdos Madness, hearing it from the man himself right there. Well, that, so, that's going to do it. We had two great days of Poppergeddon. What an incredible two days of Poppergeddon. Yeah. That was amazing. So many cool decks. The metagame was diverse. Yeah. The day two looked great. We saw everything from the expected decks all the way through Poison Storm on camera. I had a blast. It seemed like the players had a blast. A lot of new Modern Horizons 3 cards showing up, but in a balanced way. I gotta say, I mean, we're both on the popper format panel. I feel pretty good about the format right now, don't you? I think so. I think so. It was a real pleasure to have you here again. Also, Emma Partlov that joined the the event uh, and uh, do the coverage of some turns. So it was a real pleasure. So thank you, thank you, and uh, thank you to all players uh, that uh, uh, watched this entire and huge. Tournament. Thank you to Booz uh, MTG that uh, organized this uh, this huge event. Thank you to Lega Power Italia uh, to to support our work and to work on the community. That is one of the most important things. And is uh, maybe the maybe the the, the point uh, that make uh, us reach this kind of number, this huge number. So. We, we are proud of uh, our community and uh, we are proud of this format and yeah. I don't know, how, how, I, I have no other words <laughs> to congrats. There are too many people to, uh, to, 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 to say, to, to name and uh, I think it's too much. We have no time to, <laughs> to remember everyone here, but thank you to everyone that uh, works uh, with uh, with us. Also, uh, Quarta Parete. I, I don't know if uh, I can translate his fourth <laughs> fourth words. <laughs> it's like the engineer behind the scenes making it all happen. Yes, yeah. uh, they, they did an amazing world, uh, an amazing work. So thank you, thank you. Uh, all the all the coverage uh, was uh, was made uh, by by them. Yes, we. We speak, but uh, our work is uh, the, the easy one. So thank you to real everyone. And uh, also the next Popper Gathering, we have to we have to say that the next Popper Gathering will be in Rome in three months, four months. So uh, the news will be uh, will be appear. And uh, again, the other event of Booze will be the Damnation in January. And uh, we have plenty of uh, uh, plenty of project, plenty of uh, tournament uh, that are going on. And uh, yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, and I, I couldn't agree more. Thank you to everyone. It's an incredible show. And really, I want to give a big shout out to all of you and all the players. This is my second Poppergeddon. The players here are incredible. The entire country of Italy comes together for magic in a way that is truly unbelievable so i'm so happy to be out here thank you all for watching from home it has been an incredible weekend the game's been great and the players have been even better it would not be magic without the gathering
So on behalf of Heisen, me, the whole Popper Format panel, all of all the people out there in the room, all the coverage staff, thank you all for watching, keeping it alive. Let us know what you think, and we'll see you for the next Popper again in a few months. Until then, this is Gavin signing off of Popper Getting Pizza.